The topic I chose to talk about was restoring gait and mobility for a patient with an ischemic stroke. I know we have discussed CVA in class plenty of times, but I just want to hit a few things before I begin. We know that a cerebrovascular accident, or a CVA, is also known as a stroke and occurs when blood is unable to flow to the brain. An ischemic stroke arises when blood flow is hindered due to a blocked artery, whereas in a ruptured blood vessel results in a hemorrhagic stroke. And if you look to the right of the screen, you can see the differences between the two. A stroke is currently the fifth leading cause of death and the primary cause of disability and care dependency in adults in the United States. Although many factors increase the risk of stroke, there are two primary factors that determine why a stroke has occurred, which are patient age and stroke severity, size, and location. The patient was a 50-year-old Caucasian male who has a medical history of dyslipidemia, which is abnormally elevated cholesterol or fats in the blood, cigarette use for the past 25 years, occasional marijuana use, and a history of alcohol use but has refrained from drinking in the past three years. Prior to his stroke, he worked full-time doing masonry and flooring work and was completely independent with his ADLs. Patient was diagnosed with a left middle cerebral artery and MCA ischemic stroke. He displayed right hemiparesis, which is weakness, aphasia, which is loss of ability to understand or express speech, and apraxia. Patient also showed impaired coordination, sensation, and cognition in the emergency room. The patient was admitted to an acute rehabilitation. Tests at this time include the functional independence measures, which is FIM for short, motor coordination testing, sensation testing, and gait analysis, which is showed in the picture to your left. A physical therapy examination was conducted one day following admission to an acute rehabilitation hospital. A sensory neuromotor test provided results for appropriate reception, light, touch, and deep pressure and localization. A heel-to-knee test was used to test the patient's coordination, and although studies have yet to provide substantial reliability and validity for the heel-to-knee coordination test and the proprioception testing, these two techniques have been used in various settings throughout the country to provide insight into patient sensation and coordination impairments. The patient's short-term goals were to move from sit to supine with the head of the bed flat at the level of supervision, move from sit to stand with minimal assistance, perform a stand pivot with minimal assistance, ambulate over level surfaces with minimal assistance over 75 feet, take five steps with a rail on the left with minimal assistance, ambulate with a manual wheelchair over 250 feet with moderate assistance. His long-term goals consisted of being able to ambulate 150 feet with supervision and a large base quad cane to access his home environment. Another goal was to ascend and descend 16 steps with a rail on the left with minimal assistance to access his bedroom on the second floor. The patient received physical therapy, but also received occupational therapy and speech-language pathology treatment for three hours per day, for five days a week, for three weeks. The patient wore an ankle foot orthrosis, which is a support intended to control the position and motion of the ankle and compensate for weakness or correct deformities. It was worn any time the patient would be weight-bearing. Interventions for PT focused on task-specific training, including transfers and bed mobility, therapeutic activities, neuromuscular re-education, therapeutic exercises, wheelchair management, balance training, and gait training with varying levels of assistance, including harness system, robot-assisted, and overground. The interventions began at baseline ability and were progressed as the patient was able to increase strength, coordination, balance, and tolerance. Cognitive components factored into day-to-day -day innervations as motivation, extent of aphasia, and frustration varied. 
As you look to your left, you can see some of the interventions I talked about in the previous slide in more detail. For example, you can see the patient worked on static and dynamic balance activities. It goes on to explain the activity, frequency, and reason why they did the exercises. Many of these interventions chosen were determined by the clinical instructor, but have also been supported through research and clinical practice. Initial interventions focused on early mobility and stimulation and use of hemiparetic side, as research has shown this increases levels of consciousness, independence, and functional reorganization. It began at baseline ability and were was progressed as the patient was able to increase strength, coordination, balance, and tolerance. The patient progressed from an overall fin level of maximum assistance to a level of minimal assistance slash supervision level for functional mobility and gait. He gradually met all of his short-term goals over the course of treatment. He was able to meet his long-term goal for stairs but required occasional minimal assistance for walking. He was able to put on and off his ankle foot arthrosis independently. He completed supine to and from sitting at a moderate assistance level. The patient demonstrated safe transition from sitting to and from standing at a supervision level. He was able to ambulate 150 feet with supervision to minimal assistance using a LBQC. The patient was also able to ambulate 18 steps with minimal assistance by discharge. The patient also displayed improvements with strength, coordination, activity tolerance, cognition, and endurance. Although he showed vast improvements, the patient and his wife agreed that he should be discharged at a wheelchair level. The decision would allow for increased independence for the patient and a decreased fall risk. Both family and therapists agreed that the patient should continue therapy at an outpatient setting to continue progress and improve mobility and balance. The downfalls I found in this article was that there was no long-term follow-up, it was the smallest sample size you could get, and there was lack of data and specific guidelines. This is my resource page, and that's all I have for you guys. Thanks for watching.